afternoon, everyone. I'm the Vice President of Sales for the U.S. and Canada for Silver Sea, and I would personally like to thank all of you on behalf of everyone at Silver Sea for taking the time out of your day to spend some of your valuable time with us learning all about our phenomenal Galapagos experience. We have a wonderful webinar on tap for you today, and I'm absolutely delighted to introduce you to our guest speaker, Rachel Woodward. Rachel is the director of the National Sales um, Expedition, and in her role, Rachel provides a coordinated focus in the expedition segment from a national and regional perspective in collaboration with our global expedition team. I do have a couple of items that we ask you to do. Um, we, we do have some opportunity for you to ask questions, and Rachel will address them at the end of the presentation. In the meantime, please submit your text questions into the questions pane of the control panel. And we, our staff here in our Fort Lauderdale office will be busy answering some of your questions as well. So Rachel, take it away. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the Silver Galapagos webinar today. As Chris mentioned, I'm Rachel Woodward, Director of National Expedition Sales. I'm very excited to share details on our Galapagos product. Today's agenda today, I will give an overview of Silver Sea Expeditions, the all-inclusive experience that we offer both onboard and ashore, the differences between our seven-day North Central and Western itinerary, our recent refurbishment from last fall, and a special offer just for you to book a future Galapagos cruise with Silver Sea. Last fall, I experienced the Galapagos for the first time on a North Central itinerary. This image is of me and a giant tortoise at the Tortoise Reserve in Santa Cruz Island. Hundreds of tortoises were all around the reserve. This was one of my highlights from the trip. Another was snorkeling and having a five-foot manta ray swimming underneath me for five minutes. The trip is hard to describe in words, but it was the best cruise experience I have ever taken. I hope that sharing my experiences today will get you excited to go to the Galapagos. I want to highlight some special differences with our expedition cruising. What makes it so special? Well, to me, it's the most amazing way to travel. Guests explore ashore on Zodiacs and have adventures ashore and return to luxury comforts on board. Expedition voyages provide continuing educational opportunities in which guests learn and become immersed in these destinations. This is a truly life-changing experience. I also want to highlight are three expedition ships in our fleet, ranging from 100 to 132 passengers. We visit some of the most remote places in the world, including the Galapagos, Antarctica, Micronesia, and the Russian Far East. We offer an all-inclusive product, meaning all of your gratuities, all of your alcohol and beverages, as well as shore excursions are included. To give an overview of the three ships and the destinations, you can see on the map. One of the areas we visit is Africa and the Indian Ocean, where you're able to see the Maldives and the Seychelles. Australia, where you'll visit the Kimberleys via our Broome and Darwin voyages. During the summer months, we have a couple Alaska 12-day departures, cruising the Inside Passage and visiting the Aleutian Islands via Zodiac cruises. We also have some summer Russian Far East voyages, where you can see over 250 different bird species. Guests will participate in Zodiac cruises, seeing brown bears roam the Kamchatka Peninsula, and we will also be cruising the Bering Sea. In the fall, we're in Micronesia, Melanesia, and Polynesia, Polynesia uh, visiting Papua New Guinea. These itineraries are great for any guests who are snorkelers or divers. Northern Europe and the British Isles, where we visit France's wine country and the charm of Ireland and Britain. We also have South America itineraries, where guests will see the diversity of the Chilean lakes and fjords. During our summer months, we are in the Arctic, where guests can see the polar bears in small bark. One of our most popular destinations is Antarctica, visiting the Falkland Islands in South Georgia. We offer 10, 12, or 18-day itineraries. I also want to highlight our expedition staff on board. We have some of the best, most experienced expedition leaders who are on board to meet and exceed all guest expectations. They are highly experienced guides certified by the Galapagos National Park. 
and are equipped with a deep knowledge of the endemic wildlife in the Galapagos. On average, we have 11 to 13 expedition staff per ship who take great pride in explaining all that we see and do. The staff is responsible for providing daily briefings and nightly recaps. When speaking about the Silver Galapagos specifically, it has a well-staffed team of experts on board at a 1 to 10 staff to guest ratio. This is higher than most other cruise ships, which allows for more staff when operating the Zodiacs ashore, leading tours, and being available to guests both ashore as well as on board. They are all experts in their fields, ranging from snorkeling, botany, history, as well as anthropology, marine biology, birding, photography, and videography. We really have an outstanding team working to provide a truly educational experience. I also want to highlight a partnership that we have with the Royal Geographical Society. We have joined forces to spread knowledge collected from centuries of scientific exploration. The renowned Royal Geographical Society provides detailed scientific and historical information to guests. Embarking on voyages aboard all three of our expedition ships, the Silver Galapagos, the Silver Explorer, as well as the Silver Discover. In tandem with onboard staff, guests will benefit from a wide range of visual and written content from the society, enabling our guests on cruises to learn even more about their expeditions. I also want to highlight our Silver Galapagos all-inclusive experience. We are the only operator in the Galapagos to be fully all-inclusive. And what this means is it includes your seven-day cruise as well as round-trip economy air between Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands, a two-night pre-cruise hotel stay with breakfast in Quito at the JW Marriott, a beautiful hotel I stayed at last fall. Uh, we also offer an evening tour of Quito's historic city highlights, a post-cruise hotel day room at the Oro Verde Leading Hotel of the World in Guayaquil, and it also includes your national park fee. Additional benefits include transfers to and from the JW Marriott to the airport in Quito, as well as your transfers from the airport to board the Silver Galapagos in Baltra. Uh, Post-cruise, we also include the transfers to and from the Oro Verde Hotel in Guayaquil. As of April 1st, Silver Sea is now offering optional international air programs. Guests can enjoy round-trip economy air from select gateways to Ecuador for as low as $199. So this is something that has to be purchased in addition to the cruise cost. 199 gateways include New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Boston, Miami, and Dallas. We also have West Coast gateways, and those are at $299. A couple of our West Coast gateways are Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, and Portland. I also want to dive into an overview of your pre-cruise trip. So this is before you board the Silver Galapagos. And this is the two-night stay that you have in Quito. Beginning in Thursday, guests arrive in Quito, either in the afternoon or late evening. Air and sea guests will be transferred from the airport to the JW Marriott. Guests with independent air arrangements should book our private car and driver service, and that is an additional car charge if they do that. On Friday, breakfast is served at the hotel, followed by a day of leisure. Silver Sea Hospitality Desk, which is at the JW Marriott, they offer half and full day tours that guests can purchase on site. An evening Quito panoramic tour is included and offered complimentary. On Saturday, breakfast is served early at the hotel, after which guests are transferred to the airport for their departure flight in Quito at 9.30 a.m. to Baltra, where there they will board the Silver Galapagos. I would also like to discuss the two seasons in the Galapagos, because we do receive some questions with this with the weather. Uh, first is the dry season, which runs from June through December, in which the southern trade winds bring the colder Humboldt current north to the Galapagos, and the water is cooler. The highlands of the larger islands are kept green and lush, while the sea levels and shorelines have little rain and precipitation. Average temperatures range from 62 to 80 degrees. Now there also is another season, the wet season, which occurs between January through May. 
The climate in these months are more tropical, with daily rain and cloudier skies, accompanied by the southern trade wind. Ocean temperatures are warmer, so this is great for swimming and snorkeling. March and April are generally the wettest months, and an average temperature of 68 to 86 degrees. I would also like to talk a little bit about the silver Galapagos and the ship itself. The Silver Galapagos is our smallest expedition ship of our fleet, with 50 rooms and a maximum capacity of 100 guests. We rarely reach maximum capacity, as that would mean every double and triple berth is fully utilized. There are 70 crew on board the ship, so you can see 70 crew to 100 guests. That's about 1.43 guest to crew ratio. She recently underwent a multi-million dollar dry dock as part of the second refurbishment in October of last year, in which all the ship's suites and public spaces were completely renovated. I'll show you an overview of a couple of the refurbishments on board the ship. The first is of the suite itself. These new suites range in size from 210 to 360 square feet. This ship has the largest room square footage of any vessel operating in the Galapagos. So this is definitely a selling point the size of the suite. Every cabin has an ocean view with its select amount offering a private veranda. We also have eight connecting rooms, which is great for family travel. Here's an image of the gym where guests can work out throughout the day. We also have a spa and salon. Now there is a cost for this if guests would like to use some of these services from a, a pedicure, hair, or massage. So if, they, if you guys do make an appointment for this, there will be an additional charge for that. We have a library of over 350 different books that guests can read about the Galapagos Islands. This next image is of our Explorer Lounge, and this is where guests will gather for daily briefings and nightly recaps with our expedition team. And our piano bar, where guests will meet in the evening for drinks before dinner. We also offer South American wine tasting nights. Our main restaurant, and this is where you can dine for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And one of my favorite dining venues is our outdoor grill. Uh, so during lunch, it's very casual, and we have a, a full bar here outside. And dinner, we have our hot rock dining concept. I want to give a quick overview of what guests should pack for their trip. Now, everything listed on here, uh, the gear is not included, so guests do need to pack this ahead of time for your trip. Our website, silverseed.com forward slash gear shop, will have a complete list of what you need to pack, from shorts, rash guards, water sandals, and a light rain jacket. I recommend, especially from traveling on my trip from last to fall, Pack plenty of sunscreen, as the sun is extremely strong due to the close proximity to the equator. Now I want to talk about what we provide for guests on board as well as ashore. Silvery Sea is the most all-inclusive experience in the Galapagos. Now what does that mean? All of your meals on board are included, as well as your alcohol, wines, beverages, and water. Gratuities for the staff are also included in your cruise fare. The Zodiac tours are included, snorkeling, kayaking, nature hikes led by our naturalist experts. All activities and shore excursions for your seven-day cruise are included. Guests can reserve wetsuits and snorkeling equipment free of charge. And complimentary backpacks and water bottles are given to guests on board. I want to highlight a little bit about our itineraries. The Silver Galapagos sailed Saturday to Saturday, seven-day voyages through the Galapagos Islands, following either a western or north central route. These expedition cruises offer adventurous travelers the chance to discover the pristine paradise that has long been regarded as a natural laboratory of evolution. We offer two itineraries for guests. The first I want to highlight is our western itinerary. On our western itinerary, coming down the west coast of Isabella, there is an emphasis here on snorkeling. The snorkeling sites we visit offer great visibility and a chance to snorkel with penguins, sea turtles, and sea lions. 
guests will see penguins, and over 95% of them reside on these islands. There are also more reptiles, such as the giant tortoise, sea turtles, and lava lizards, as well as several species of iguanas, which exist in large numbers, and can also be seen warming their bodies and sneezing out salty drops of water. You can also see wild flamingos in season and photograph the iconic Pinnacle Rock, which can be seen in Santiago Island. Now, on the western itinerary, there are less birds in that there are not as many species to check off guests' bucket list. However, you still are able to see the penguins and flightless cormorants, which are not available on the north central itinerary. Hikes on this itinerary are fewer and less strenuous and the sceneries tend to be more dramatic. The Western Islands are home to the only active volcanoes in the Galapagos. Additionally, there are some great zodiac cruising opportunities on the Western itinerary, which is an ideal option for those guests less active and not as physically fit, as well as for families with young children over the age of six who do not want to go wandering around on the island. Our second itinerary is a North Central itinerary. And this is the itinerary that I participated in last fall. For those guests that are birders, the North Central itinerary is for them. You will see all three of the boo, uh, booby species, the blue-footed booby, the Nazca booby, as well as the red-footed booby, which you would miss the red-footed booby on the Western itinerary. You will also see three of the four mock, mockingbird species of which Charles Darwin created his theory of evolution. You will also see the frigate birds with their inflated red neck. That happens to be one of my favorite birds. From October through January, guests have the opportunity to see the waved albatross at Española Island. Guests will visit the tortoise reserve on Santa Cruz Island, seeing both small and large tortoises. You'll also get to tour Genovesa Island and see the short-eared owl, which happens to be the most dangerous animal in the Galapagos, preying on the storm petrel. There are more options to hike, including more strenuous hikes, which are recommended for guests with a better fitness level. Of course, on those days that feature more strenuous hikes, other options for guests will also be available, such as zodiac cruises, kayaking, or beachcombing walks. Snorkeling on the North Central itinerary should not be forgotten, as you will have a chance to swim with sea lions, manta rays, and plenty of colorful fish. I also want to get into some of the magnificent animal behaviors in the Galapagos. And this is a gorgeous photo right here. You can see of a giant tortoise. Wildlife viewing is abundant all year long on both itineraries. Observations are always respectful, and wildlife has no fear here of humans. From the land iguanas and giant tortoises, the blue-footed boobies plunge diving into the ocean to Darwin's finches. This is truly like no other place on Earth. Silver Sea offers options to maximize your freedom in this highly protected environment. Every day includes multiple activity options ranging from hiking, swimming, snorkeling, zodiac cruises, or even a walk along the beach. There is, as we say, no one-size-fits-all scheduling on this trip. What I want to do now is walk you through a day in the life aboard the Silver Galapagos. The ship is anchored every morning in a new destination. Breakfast is often early, starting at 6 a.m., and can go until 7.30 to 8 a.m., depending on disembarkation times and the time of the season. Guests meet in the Explorer Lounge in a group of 10 to 12 guests per expedition leader. And this was our group from last fall. You can see where our attire with a big brim hat. That gives you an idea of just what we wear. Uh, after a meeting in the Explorer Lounge, guests will make their way to the Zodiac platform with their group and their expedition leader and walk down the gangway of stairs to board the Zodiac. Our fleet of safe zodiacs allow all guests to disembark with ease. We always receive questions from guests about getting in and out of the zodiac. So I really want to draw your attention here to the amount of staff assisting the guest in the photo. You can see four crew members, and they're all wearing the blue shirts with the hats, um, helping this guest get on board using the sailor grip. To step off 
the platform into the Zodiac, the guest takes about four steps. So it's really easy to get on board. The crew will also go out of their way to assist guests with boarding the Zodiac. Now, once you're on the Zodiac, guests will wear their life jacket sitting side by side and will have the Zodiac driver and the expedition leader who will be bringing the group ashore that day. They'll bring you ashore to remote landings and allow for up-close encounters with rare wildlife. Now, I want to give an overview of the type of landings we have. We have two types. A dry landing is where you come up, um, where the Zodiac comes up to a platform or a jetty. So you can see here the Zodiac landed on a platform where guests are helped with the expedition a staff member to stand on, get off the Zodiac onto the platform. Now we also um, have a dry landing where there might be a stair climb. Guests will, on these dry landings, want to wear their walking shoes. This landing is preferred. Accommodating staff is always available to make it easy to embark and disembark the Zodiac. The alternative is a wet landing. And here you can see of a, a past guest where you sit on the side of the Zodiac, swing your legs into the water, water, and we land onto a beach. As you can see in this photo, this guest is wearing water sandals, shorts, and a t-shirt, which are items not included in the trip and need to be purchased and packed ahead of time. I recommend for my trip last fall to definitely pack either Keen water shoes or Tiva sandals, and this gentleman is wearing some Tivas. Um, and you also want to bring a wide brim hat to cover your neck, as well as plenty of sunscreen, because it is very hot. Different activity options that we offer. Well, the great thing about this is whether or not you are 8 years old or 80 years old, there is a joy and a wonder about the Galapagos. Activities are suited for all ages, interests, and fitness levels. Small groups, plenty of options each day, offering both flexibility as well as variety. We were recently recognized for having the best shore excursions in the small ship category by the 2015 Cruise Critic Cruisers Choice Award. I also want to highlight some of the shore excursion options that we offer to guests. The first is a longer walk, and this is what we refer to as less walking, more talking. Guides take guests on an adventure walk to a point of interest, such as a colony of sea lions, land iguanas, or a bird area, or to get a beautiful panoramic view of the island. Long walks vary in length, typically running between an hour and a half, I would say, and two hours. However, guests are aware of the amount of time commitment ahead of time. The other option are shorter walks, which are more interpretive. In this image, our expedition leader is holding a Sally Lightfoot crab and is explaining its biology to guests. Perhaps the easiest activity offered is a beachcombing or bird watching session, likely lasting one hour in length. Guests are accompanied by their expedition leader with a group of 10 to 12 guests who is there to explain what is happening with an emphasis again on interpretation. We stop more frequently and go more slowly, looking at wildlife and taking photographs. We also offer interest-focused activities, such as a photographer, where guests can go ashore with a photographic expert and really make that the emphasis of the activity. These walks are also offered with botanists, birders, or even marine biologists. You have an opportunity to dive into that interest with an expert. After your first morning activity ashore, you return back to the ship for lunch on board. We have the beautiful outdoor grill, which is actually one of my favorite dining places, where guests can have fish, ceviche, a salad bar, pizza, or even a pasta. The other option is an indoor restaurant where you can order off the menu. Now your afternoons on board, um, after your lunch, you have a couple hours of downtime. So this is where you could take a nap, relax outside at the jacuzzi, watch a movie in your stateroom, and then as well you will head to the Explorer Lounge for an afternoon lecture from one of our local guides. And the guides will lecture either on Darwin and his earlier life. Another opportunity could be on an introduction of the Galapagos Enchanted Islands and explain why the Galapagos is so unique, including the geology, climate, as well as the current. 
Now, activity options ashore. Well, after a few hours on board in the afternoon, it is time to get back onto the island where you can enjoy water activities such as snorkeling, which is my favorite activity to do, kayaking, or even swimming. The best part is that you don't have to pack a mask, fins, or snorkel. That's our job, and you will reserve that gear at the start of the cruise. Guests can reserve snorkel gear, as I mentioned, the first day, and that will be your mask, your fins, your snorkel, and either a long or short wetsuit. Our staff is equipped with an underwater video camera capturing the remarkable sight below the surface. The videographer will show his underwater video and images he took of the day during the evening recap. Guests can purchase this as a DVD on board at the end of the cruise. I also want to highlight different snorkeling options we have. So we do have two different types of snorkeling options. One is in shallow waters, which that was from the slide before, where guests um, access the beach and they can snorkel directly from the beach. Or for maybe a more advanced snorkelers, we get snorkel from the zodiac into deeper water. Guests have the ability to see parrotfish, white tip reef sharks, manta rays, which I saw my manta ray on uh, my last trip, and stingrays. Uh, another important thing with snorkeling, we do get questions about the water temperature. So July through December, the Humboldt current brings cooler waters, especially during this misty cold weather season. Water temperatures range from 65 to 75 degrees. So you definitely do want to wear a wetsuit. Now January through June, the El Nino current may bring warm waters in the Galapagos, which will make the surface warmer and rainfall will increase. The water temperatures tend to be a little warmer, I would say on average about 70 to 80 degrees. Another afternoon activity option is kayaking. We have eight double kayaks on board. Our kayaks are a great mode of exploration for beginners and experts. They provide a water level perspective of wildlife and enhances guest exploration of the island. Now, every evening when our expedition staff is giving their nightly recap, they will offer a sign-up list so that you can reserve a kayak for the following day. Guests can also relax on the beach and have the opportunity to get up close and personal with the wildlife. Another option are zodiac cruises, which provide an excellent platform for watching wildlife. And some of my favorite things I remember on my zodiac cruise was seeing the young eagle rays, brown pelicans, sea lions, and sea turtles. This is great for all ages. So this is really great for children that are over the age of six or anyone that might have a little bit of mobility issues, they can take the zodiac cruises in the afternoon. The next type of afternoon activity we offer are overland tours. We we'll go up into the highlands to see the giant tortoises in a completely different environment. Guests are transported via motor coach, and it generally takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get up into the highlands. The highlands are more cool and moist. So on some tours, boots are provided complimentary, and you can see in this photo the attire guests are wearing. Generally, this is an hour tour with your group of 10 to 12 guests guided by your expedition leader. <clears throat> when the day is over, you return to the ship for cocktails, a massage, maybe wine tasting, or even tapas. This provides an ideal time to relax or even to socialize with friends on board and exchange stories of your adventures earlier in the day. Now, after that, you will meet in the Explorer Lounge, and this is where you'll have your nightly recap and briefing. Our expedition staff will provide a recap of the day and a briefing to prepare for the following day. So they'll highlight all of the activities, whether or not there will be a wet landing or a dry landing, so you know what you'll need to wear in the morning, whether or not you're wearing your water sandals or your walking shoes. This is where uh, you can see the daily briefing and recap. The exhibition staff member will be up front. And they'll also have sign-ups are available. So any of the activities that are space limited, such as kayaking, guests can sign up after the exhibition leader is done giving his presentation of the day. And this happens every evening before dinner. I want to highlight a little bit about the dining we have on board. Uh, for dinner, 
guests have the option of dining in our main restaurant, which you can see here the image of our main restaurant, and it is an open seating policy, which allows easy mingling with guests and the expedition staff. The other option is our outdoor hot rocks grill, and this offers delicious, sustainable, local cuisine, which adds an extra level of immersion to your experience. I have to say, our Hot Rocks dining concept is my favorite dining venue that we have on any of our ships. Family travel is a great way for all ages to experience the Galapagos. We have many multi-generational families traveling with their grandparents, parents, and grandchildren over the age of six. This is perfect for any holiday travel, spring break, or even summer vacation. There are eight connecting rooms on board the ship, and we do offer pull-out couches in some seats so that guests can have third berth accommodations. During holiday voyages or sailings where we have more children on board, we might offer children's movies in the lounge during dinner with pizza and hot dogs. I also want to highlight a little bit about extending your vacation. Um, we offer a couple different options, and this is an additional cost to your trip. There are two options we offer in Machu Picchu. A pre-cruise option are four nights, and a post-cruise option are three nights. The Machu Picchu Explorer will offer tours, overnights, and flights from Lima to beautiful Cusco and stunning Quito. The other option is the Machu Picchu Grand Explorer which is similar to the Machu Picchu Explorer, but this enhanced land program, however, features a journey to Machu Picchu aboard the legendary Hiram Bingham Railway. Another option for guests is an Amazon Explorer trip. Guests will travel in luxury aboard the MV Aria, dining on perhaps the finest Amazonian Peruvian gourmet cuisine on the river. This adventure also includes an overnight stay and tour of Lima, Peru's colonial capital. This option is six nights post-cruise. The third pre or post land opportunity is exploring Puno and Lake Titicaca, where guests will journey into Lake Titicaca, known as the sacred waters of the Inca Empire, and the highest navigatable lake in the world. This option is four nights pre-cruise. So I'm very excited to offer a special just for those that are on this webinar. We're offering $200 per suite savings for any new bookings made as of today on the, for the Galapagos. So April 17th today until May 17th. If you book a Galapagos booking for 2015 or 2016, you'll receive $200 savings for your booking. To receive this offer, please contact your travel professional or you can call Silver Sea at 1-888-978-4070. And you do have to mention the promo code listed here. Now with that, I want to thank everyone for their time. And I know that we've received a couple questions here. So let's go into those questions. Thank you, Rachel. That was certainly very informative. We're now going to answer those questions submitted during today's presentation. As a reminder, you still have time to submit those questions that you may still have through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. Our first question is, can the staff on Silver Galapagos accommodate guests with special dietary restrictions? Great question, Chris. Yes, they can. Um, I can even use myself for an example here. I'm a vegetarian, so I do not eat meat or fish, and I was very impressed with this. The first day when I embarked, I met with the food and beverage manager, and he asked specifically certain foods if I could not eat, and he actually checked on me every evening whether or not I was in the dining room or the hot rock grill. I was really impressed one evening. I was with a group of about 12 people at our hot rock, which has that hot rock stone, and guests usually grill a piece of meat. Well, he actually brought me some vegetables and mushrooms that I could grill on there. Um, I know there was someone else on board the ship that day that was allergic to shellfish, and she carried an EpiPen, and they went out of their way to make sure that her food was cooked on a separate grill. So yes, anyone that has dietary restrictions, I just recommend um, that you let Silver Sea know ahead of time so that the ship can go out of their way to accommodate your dietary preferences. 
Thank you, Rachel. And our next question is, are the overland tours complimentary, or do we need to pay extra? All overland tours that are part of the seven-day cruise. And think of that as you're on and off the Zodiac. So when you disembark the ship, you're on the Zodiac, whether or not you go ashore and take a beachcombing walk or a hike or you're snorkeling on the beach, as well as going up into the highlands, those are all included. So the price of your voyage includes the seven-day cruise as well as the two-night pre-stay in Quito and the post-cruise one night in Guayaquil. The only thing that would be additional would be if you had any spa appointments on board or if you purchased our pre and post package, which are those three to four night packages in Machu Picchu or Lake Titicaca. That will be an additional cost. Okay, thank you, Rachel. If there are no further questions, this completes our Q&A session. Our team here in our Fort Lauderdale office will go through all questions asked during the presentation to ensure everyone has been properly answered. On behalf of Rachel, myself, and everyone at Silver Sea, I would like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Please note you will also receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar, along with the certificate of the $200 savings that Rachel just mentioned during her presentation. We certainly hope that you're as excited as we are for you to experience this amazing Galapagos um, product. On behalf of everyone at Silver Sea and our presenter, thank you for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend, everyone, and book your Silver Sea cruise today. Thank you. Thank you all.